Before we begin on discussing communication and representation, we try to define or describe what what representation is. As Stuart Hall uh, defines representation as the use of signs and symbols to stand for our concepts, ideas, and even feelings. So the use of symbols is one of the important aspects in, of communication. And in fact, the use of symbols is one of the natures of communication. Communication would not exist without uh, symbols, without the use of symbols. Communication uh, today would not be as complex and would not be as converged and um, widely used without the use of symbols. So here, symbols are very important in communication because we invent and also develop signs and symbols to represent and communicate what we think and feel. So without the use of symbols, we, we can we can still uh, uh, communicate. We can actually still uh, express our thoughts and feelings. But at the same time, w would the other person understand that? Would the other person uh, understand what we're talking about or what we're communicating? So here, we need the use of symbols in order for uh, different people to understand what we are actually communicating. And because of the use of symbols, there is what we call a representation. Uh, you also notice that as we look at the history of communication, we, we have seen how symbols were used. We started on using oral uh, orality in order to communicate with other people. And as we try to do orality, we also use our bodies to communicate with them. And during that time, we are trying to establish what uh, what this kind of action, what, what this kind of gesture, or even this kind of utterances represent. And later on, we would be able to discover uh, visual communication. And because of that, we are able to develop meet and communication. And meet and communication wouldn't be possible without the use of symbols. The words that we are using today, the letters, the alphabet that we are using today, the numbers that we are using today, is a representation of uh, what we are trying to say, what we are trying, what we are currently feeling. So here, we symbols and the use of symbols is very important in communication and representation is very important in understanding not just the meaning of uh, of an action not just the meaning of an utterance or what uh, what is the meaning of a particular statement or a particular message but uh, representation is also important for us to understand how the world works how our society works and how we can be able to become better communicators using the use using using symbols so our agenda for today is first to discuss the theories of uh, different theories of representation and next is to explain concepts in semiotics or uh, the study of signs and symbols and we would also look at how important semiotics is in understanding our world and also understanding the messages uh, that we craft or others craft or communicate and finally to analyze various media content using relevant concepts in semiotics so before we go to the theories of representation we need to look at um, these concepts the the concepts of language the concepts of science and also the concepts of mimicry. So when it comes to representation, our main focus actually is to study language. And when we, and this, uh, and, and linguistics, which is the study of language, is also important when it comes to communication or when it comes to communicating with other people. So here, language represents the various elements of a community's environments, 
relationships, experiences, and understanding of everything. So when we try to talk, when we try to look at language, it, it's not just uh, different words, not just uh, about different syntax or grammar or how they were um, pronounced or how words are pronounced, how, how words are produced. But we also look at why, why this particular language exists or how does it uh, represent or reflect the community the community itself the culture of a particular uh group who is speaking that language the environment that shape uh the the words that are used or produced in that language the experiences and also the worldview of the people who are speaking in that language so uh, here every language is different and because and because of that, we also look at the diversity of language and it shows the diversity of our culture, the diversity of our people, and, uh, and also the diversity of our environment. Also, language uh, changes because uh, those who use it, which is us, um, also change from time to time. And that means as we continue to evolve, as we continue to have uh, deeper experiences, as we continue to have uh, deeper understandings of everything, as we continue to increase our knowledge of our world, of ourselves, and of our people, our language also changes. As our culture changes, as our uh, culture is dynamic, language is also dynamic. It also changes from time to time. And finally, uh, language represents a particular culture so as we use language if we use this particular language we also uh, become part or belong to that particular culture as we try to become more fluent in speaking that speaking and writing that language we are also becoming more and more immersed in that culture so we are not just also we are not just studying language we are also studying their culture as well. So for example, uh, people who are studying Korean language, um, some of them, when, when you ask them, they, they, they start to study Korean language because they want to understand uh, a drama without looking at the subtitles or they want to understand a particular K-pop song. And because of that, they are also studying culture. They are also studying Korean culture when they when they try to learn uh, the Korean language. So because a language uh, represents a culture, every time we use a language in different forms of media, uh, also reflects and share that culture. So whenever we see a particular content in uh, so social media or we see our particular content in television or we, we read a book or a magazine or a newspaper and it becomes, uh, it, it somehow touches us or uh, this kind of content uh, somehow affects us. It means that, he, that it reflects our culture. Uh, that content reflects our culture or, or at the same time, as we continue to consume different types of content uh, as we continue to consume uh, different uh, type, uh, type forms of media, we also uh, share, not just share, but also consume different culture. And that means we continue to develop not just our identity, but also our understanding of the world as well. And that is the, uh, that is the uh, beauty of using language and studying language. When it comes to science, uh, uh, we need to define science first. So signs are actually representations that people use and which are meaningful to others who belong to the same group. So here, uh, when we use signs, that means uh, these are something that, that are used, these are tools for, for different people to understand one another and it 
it represents a meaning, it represents a thought or an idea. So uh, some signs are uh, can be meaningful globally, so it can be meaningful or it can be understood by different types of people, while some signs are only meaningful or understandable to a particular group or community. So uh, what, what is one thing to do in order to understand language, signs, and representation? One thing that we can do is to, to look at the concept of mimicry. So mimicry or mimicking is part if of a human of human nature, and that's our, and actually that's our way to learn. If you if you want if you want to learn something, if you want to learn a language, or if you want to be part of that culture, we try to mimic them. We if you want to learn something, we try to practice them to mimic them, and that is our uh, that is our human response when it comes to learning so when we do mimicking when it comes to acquiring a particular culture and or even language and this also explains why we have a drama why we have films why we have photographs and paintings and other recordings because we try to document them and as we try to document them we we also mimic them we also mimic them in order for us to have a clear documentation or even to have an accurate documentation or even to have a, an interpretation of of what is real of what is happening so here uh these this actually these forms of media or these types are basically mimetic uh, representations of what happened or what may happen in real life so in other words uh these forms of communication not only reflects a uh, reality but can also shape uh, the future so uh, we we always see here especially in uh, digital media or in social media that uh, these uh, these forms of media can be used to to share awareness to share uh, to, to share ideas but at the same time it can also be used as tools for this information as well as um, and then it also inspires people to do to mimic what may happen to mimic what is really happening so if our content is is about hate then actually people will mimic hate and will actualize hate hatred so it will also reflect in the society if we if people uh if people uh, share love in their content, then that means uh, if people will mimic love and will also uh, share love or actualize love in real life. So now we go to to different theories of representation. We'll, uh, in this lecture, we will discuss uh, three, three theories and these theories of representation grapple with the question of uh, where the meanings of science come from. So let's go first uh, uh, with the theory of, with the reflective theory of representation. So representation as, uh, here representation is uh, more of a, an imitation or mimesis or mimicry. So it, um, so reflect, the reflective theory of representation assumes that meaning exists objectively in the physical world of objects, people, and events, and that language functions as a mirror of an objective reality. So the reflective theory of, of representation posits that our reality is represented through different forms of media, which acts as a mirror that reflect reality. So an example of this reflective approach can be seen in the claim that the TV news programs are simply reporting what has happened or what is currently happening. And in the idea that documentaries or photographs or even uh, paintings or drama show and record real life or quote unquote the real life. However, um, the limitation of this approach becomes apparent if we closely examine the, the, tr the truth claims made in uh, different uh, forms of media. 
So not all reflections uh, show the true form of reality. Even reflections can also be manipulated. The next one is the intentional theory of representation. So the intentional approach assumes that meanings are uh, determined by author of text. And the authors includes, uh, include artists, poets, performers, uh, uh, writers, movie directors, actors, producers. And the texts are, are the varied works produced by these authors, which take form in the print, media, broadcast media, and even online uh, materials. So the intentional approach uh, of representation basically says that in order to understand a material, we must know the intention, the context, and also the motivation of the one who made that material. So the author's meaning will be the meaning of the uh, material. So representation in the intentional approach is thus a subjective process that is affected by the author's experiences, background, and perspectives. However, the limitation of the intentional approach becomes apparent when one realizes that there are as many interpretations as there are readers of a text. So different readers have different interpretations when they come to experience or encounter that material. So once a text is produced and uh, circulated or shared, there are multiple meanings that can be arrived when um, those who experience or encounter the material decode that material. So that means, uh, so it doesn't mean that the author's intentions are immaterial or irrelevant in making sense of their, uh, their work or text. But however, uh, we, need, we need to understand that uh, this uh, form of material, this product, cannot be limited to only a singular or an ultimate or an absolute meaning that is faithful to the author's intentions. We, uh, once, once a material is shared, it is not subject to the author's interpretation alone. And that means meanings change once they are shared through discourse. Meanings change once they are circulated, once they are produced. And that means the author's interpretation is one basis only can be considered as a basis or reference for the many interpretations that will arise from that kind of, of text. The third is, and the final uh, approach, is the constructionist theory of representation. So the reflective and intentional approaches both assume that uh, representation is a linear process of transmission or that reality is simply reflected from one point to another or that meanings originate from the, from the author um, or from the source and sent to the receiver. So in contrast, uh, when we look at the constructionist approach, uh, it emphasizes the active role of the reader or the active role of those who receive the message in the process of decoding, making sense, and also constructing meanings out of that, uh, out of those materials. So here, uh, the meaning is neither limited to the material world as it exists out there, nor it is contained within the author's intentions. So meaning here, the meanings that are produced or that can be decoded from a certain material that is produced. Um, are constructed by readers themselves or the those who experience or encounter the, the materials and that reality is subjective and multiple. So the, the constructionist approach actually gives us opportunities to own the material we experience. So in other words, uh, materials and texts are not limited to the reflection of the reality where it uh, originated nor the reality of the author. But reality is now subjective and multiple. And because we have the opportunity to own the material, we can actually uh, use it to resist the status quo, assert alternative options, and facilitate change. So it allows for a critical questioning and possible subversion 
of a dominant reading or an interpretation of the text. It allows you to have an alternative uh, interpretation and at the same time to express yourself, um, to express uh, an alternative approach to it or even to challenge the dominant interpretation of uh, that kind of material. So this is important because represent representations are not neutral. So we have to remember that representations are not neutral, but are sites of struggle where myths and ideologies often mask, uh, often mask uh, realities and reinforce uh, a status quo, which excludes other voices or pushes other realities to the margins. So, oh, uh, for example, we we look at how media represents or uses uh, representation, uh, or uses different uh, symbols to represent uh, beauty or even our resi Filipino resilience. So here uh, they have a, they have the dominant interpretation on on these kinds of symbols but but in our constructionist approach we allow to criticize we are allowed to criticize these kinds of materials and even to challenge these dominant uh dominant interpretations of beauty or even filipino resilience and that will help us to 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 uh, to allow other interpretations that are based on facts and um, to allow different uh, different kinds of communication to flourish the discourse, to flourish uh, the arguments presented in every message as crafted. So here we will look at uh, semiotics and um, semiotics, the discursive approach, and also the production of meaning. So when we try to look at semiotics, we we also look at uh, studying language or studying meanings. So semiotics is basically uh, uh, the study of signs. And when we talk about signs, uh, we also look at uh, the signifier, the signified, uh, the icon, the index, and even the symbol. So we will uh, we will we will discuss and explore. Uh, explore that in this lecture. So, when we talk about signs, uh, we, we, it consists of a signifier and a signified. So, the signifier is the word or more generally the physical object. So, it can be, uh, the example of that is a chair. So, what we see right now, uh, what we can see in our uh, home is a chair that we use to uh, represent our thoughts. So the word, the word chair is, is the signifier, but the signified is the thought or idea that is represented. So the, the chair, uh, the, the, the object that is the chair, which is the signified, while the word chair is the signifier. So according, so for peers, uh, he classifies uh, signifiers into uh, three things, icon, index, and also a symbol. So when we talk about icons, it resembles what it represents. So, and then an index is a logical or a natural relationship to what it represents. And finally, a symbol has no relationship or resemblance to what it represents, but its meaning is agreed upon by the people so here when we talk about uh symbols it is not necessarily related or to the to the signifier i to the to the signified or to the one it represents but uh, symbols are actually more of uh constructed by by a group of people or by uh, a majority so they agreed on they agree that the, that the chair, the object of the chair, is called a chair. So, um, you know, so in order, uh, so it, it might also be changed. I can call a chair a table, but here, uh, most people agree that the chair is a chair. So, 
So, so that is how they, uh, they look at symbols. That is how they look at meanings. So while semiotics um, deals with how language constructs meaning, the discursive approach questions the perceived neutrality of language and the supposed innocence of the meaning-making process. So we initially thought that uh, everything that we try to represent um, is neutral and language is neutral. But here we need to consider that language is never, not and never neutral and language is not innocent. The meanings that we produce is based on uh, different kinds of contexts, different kinds of situations. So according to Foucault, uh, discourse appear in a body or across a range of texts. Discourse is not just a single uh, statement or a simple message, but the sum of what is said and what is not said about a topic. So it also includes who can talk and also how to talk about certain uh, issues or certain symbols. So therefore, the discursive approach emphasizes the connection between uh, discourse and power, the regulation of conduct, and the construction of identity and subjectivities. So here we will try to look at uh, how power or how power relations are, are shown and represented in different forms of media and how we can use uh, semiotics, the semiotics approach or, uh, or, or the semiotics method to, to look at the messages or presented in uh, different types of um, media or in the media today. So here, we will look at three things, uh, print media and advertisements, uh, broadcast media shown in videos and uh, films, and also in online and social media. So in, in the previous um, uh, sections, we learned about the theories of representation and also the semiotic and discursive approach uh, to representation. So we will look at now, we will now look at the representation shown in uh, different forms of media, whether in traditional media or in uh, social media. So in the Philippines, actually, uh, in the Filipino context, the role of mainstream mass media in the reproduction of uh, certain representations of various sectors and uh, demographics in the Philippine society um, has also been noted by different uh, scholars. So here, um, we actually look at the, the ethnicity or even Filipino uh, resilience or common stereotypes such as uh, uh, how mainstream media represents, um, represents indigenous peoples as um, dark-skinned people or, provin or provinciana or provinciano. So, or if we try to look at um, different marginalized sectors, they are actually uh, represented as poor or they are represented as uh, as fools or uh, idiots. So here, uh, when this, these are representations done by uh, mainstream, mainstream media, we can also see that uh, in the Filipino context, gender inequalities also uh, are shown and represented in terms of appearances, the assigned roles, and also the characteristics attributed to them in different forms of media. So on the other hand, uh, media anthropologists have observed the emerging function of the mass media as tools for self-representation of minoritized groups and cultures. So in the case of uh, the IPs or indigenous peoples, uh, they have consciously and unconsciously utilized different forms of media to correct, to debunk uh, stereotypes, to challenge the current um, means, uh, current representations done by mainstream media about them, as well as to represent their worldviews, to represent their self-determination that were previously been othered or previously been uh, neglected or discriminated by uh, colonial colonial by colonial forces or even uh, colonial or imperial forces. 
So uh, other minoritized uh, uh, people or other uh, those who are um, minoritized or discriminated by mainstream media also use media to resist uh, na ide- ideologies that are against them or that uh, that um, that makes them marginalized. So here uh, we will also learn how to uh, as we go one by one uh, we will also learn how to conduct textual analysis of these kinds of media content. So let's go first with the print media of and advertisement or even in branding when it comes to branding. So when we talk about print media it refers to written or a uh, visual signs published for distribution to a mass audience to through different uh, printing methods, printing, photocopying, or even posting PubMats. So examples of this include uh, newspapers, magazines, books, uh, journals, newsletters, photographs, postcards, brochures, flyers, posters, or even uh, uh, social media cards. So as tools for mass communication, they have disseminated our representations and imaginaries of various groups, sectors, and other aspects of reality. So in analyzing uh, print media text, we must look at uh, the use of visual codes, narratives, layouts, and design to representations of a particular group or experience, class, uh, idea, or even topic. So visual codes, especially in photographs, include the use of color or uh, the gestures, the expressions, or even the gaze of the subjects. We also look at the lighting or, um, or even the angles or the types of shots and even uh, the character proximities or, or how close the characters are uh, in the camera. So we also look at the layout and design. So layout and design in newspapers and magazines or even books may include the, the font styles and even the sizes used. So whenever a font is uh, very noticeable or even the font is uh, the font size is uh, large, that means it is more noticeable. It is more highlighted. So uh, we also look at the placement of, the, of an article. Is it located to a place where people can easily read it? Is it located to a place where uh, people won't usually notice it and how much space is allotted to that so the words also the words and narratives uh, communicated could also mean something when it comes to uh, looking at visual not just visual cues but also in um, how how this uh, how these were placed in a particular space uh, where they will where they can uh, uh, post the the material. The next one is the uh, representations in uh, broadcast, um, broadcast media uh, shown in video or in film. So radio broadcasting uh, communicates via sound. So the human voice, the sound effects, music, and that um, and we need to note that representations are affected by the inherent uh, nature of a medium. For instance, uh, representations on radio are only uh, oral. So when we try to look, when we try to uh, to describe or when we try to picture uh, what we hear, it is something uh, based on our perceptions and based on how our radio uh, helps us perceive. So television, on the other hand, has multidimensional representations. So what if, uh, if radio if radio representations are only oral, uh, television uh, can actually represent the image that we are trying to picture from what we are currently hearing. So uh, also, a single medium may have different groups of audience who may have their own way of interpreting or decoding what they have perceived. Moreover, our producers of media messages try their best to manipulate signs and symbols especially in television and even in digital media, hoping to homogenize the decoding process. So 
the more that we actually use uh, oral, visual, and even written communication, the more that we incorporate those things or those forms of communication, the more that we can homogenize the decoding process, the more that we can actually show what we are actually trying to represent. So on television, video, and film, both audio and visual elements are used to communicate representations of various groups, topics, events, and other aspects of reality. So reading the content of these um, media forms entails an analysis of their visual elements or mise-en-scene. So for specific characters, their movements, roles, manners, manners of speaking, uh, attitudes, uh, activities, and appearance contribute to the representation of certain groups or sectors of society. So here, when we try to analyze a me uh, broadcast media, we look at uh, their movement. We look at uh, their visual elements. We look at how they, how they talk, how they speak, how they move, how they clothe and uh, their attitudes, their agency. And as we look onto that, we would be able to, uh, to observe their representations. What, um, what are they trying to represent? Who are they trying to, uh, to represent? And finally, we will look at the representations in online and in social media. So the emergence of online and social media has given rise to more platforms for representation. So here, uh, when it comes to print media or even in broadcast media, we, we may assume that uh, those are limited when it comes to representation or uh, it will, uh, when it comes to uh, the power of who can represent who and um, how they will represent one group how and how they will represent one group whether or not they belong to that group or or not so but 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 when it comes to representation in so in online and social media uh it has it has more opportunities to for for different groups or for their own group for their group for their own groups to represent who they really are so when it comes to print media or in a broadcast media, there is a monopoly of who, who can share content and who can, represent, uh, who can represent a group. But when it comes to the online and social media where people have more access to these kinds of technologies, uh, pe people, have now, ha people now have more opportunities to represent themselves, to represent their uh, identities or to represent their groups. So it also paved the way, paved uh, the way for media convergence, and also provided uh, traditional media with more outlets. So here we are not replacing traditional media, but we are actually reinforcing traditional media with the new media. So here, when we try to represent different groups of people, uh, it is actually very, uh, very tricky. So uh, what if we represent other people and places through our uh, gestures, words, photos, videos, or films? So every action that we do, every content that we produce represents something. It represents not only our ideas, but the, but the people, but the um, events, but, but also the places or even the actions uh, that, that we are trying to do. So here, we try to look at uh, how do we actually make media a better place because there are always misinterpretations. There are also misinterpretations of, the, of different types of people. There are misinterpretations of different uh, ideas or concepts or knowledge or even identities. So media is used to make something uh, typical or, uh, or, or media is used for stereotyping because um, especially mainstream media. 
but we can also use media to change the narrative to to change the what is um to to, to challenge the misinterpretations and also to uh to challenge what is typical in order for us to forward um the rea- to forward what is real to forward uh who, who, who we really are and what that idea really represents or what that symbol really represents. So we can actually use media to change the narrative and also to, to challenge current representations. So here, we are trying to make, uh, to be more responsible in, uh, in, representing, uh, in representing an idea or in representing a thought through, through the use of symbols and also through the use of media. So here we are not actually, we are not, so the lesson here is we, we won't just uh, share, we won't just grab messages, we will also be more aware and be more responsible in sharing our messages or in crafting our messages. Of what does it represent? Who does, it, uh, um, who does our messages represent? or uh, what idea is being represented in our uh, messages or in our communication. So here we are becoming more responsible and becoming more effective when it comes to communication by understanding a representation and using media to, to not make something typical, but also to change it, to, to actually represent what is real. To actually represent the truth and to challenge current representations, which is also the current challenge of uh, today's communication and media.